Picture a high school student. He comes home from school, grabs a snack, goes to his room, and spends the next five hours playing League of Legends on the computer. So thoughts about this guy might be that he's lazy or unproductive. And I used to have the same thoughts. But now, my first thought when I hear this is, wow, he must have really good eyesight. Improved eyesight is just one of the many benefits of video games that I'd like to share with you. Video games should be accepted as a productive part of society. The many benefits of video games can be employed in early education, extracurricularly, and in later life. Overall, society should no longer view video games as a waste of time, but rather a way to be productive and train your brain. Games can be used in early education to teach children skills like reading, writing, and math. Some of these include Jumpstart and LeapFrog games. Other games can be used to teach deductive reasoning skills and logic. Some of these are the Oregon Trail and FunBrain.com. A lot of classrooms have been using these for years already. The great thing about them is that so many already exist. Teachers just need to start employing them more and more in the classroom. Many mobile apps also exist that will help you train and exercise your brain. Some of these are Brain Age by Nintendo or games like Sudoku. Parents and teachers and society in general should all encourage these be used more on a regular basis. So what about real video games, you might be asking? While action video games don't teach particularly educational skills, they still have many benefits that should be recognized as productive. Daphne Babler, a professor of brain and cognitive sciences at the University of Rochester, has done upwards of 20 studies regarding the healthy benefits of video games. In one of these studies, she took a group of 20 students who do not regularly play video games. She trained them on action video games for hours for weeks. At the end of this, she tested them on their vision, focus, and multitasking skills. All of the students improved in all three areas. After this, she told them to go home and not play any more video games. She retested them every few months on the same three skills, and all of the students retained the improvement in these skills even though they were no longer playing games. In some cases, this improvement lasted for two years. When multitasking, the average person's reflexes slow down upwards of 30%. Those who play video games frequently show a decrease of only 10% in their reflexes when multitasking. So how can we use this? Video game clubs should be sponsored and supported by schools. They would create so many opportunities for students to get involved, make friends, and add to their resumes. Video game clubs should be seen on resumes and in yearbooks, right next to honor societies, band, and sports teams. Speaking of sports teams, more schools should be recognizing video games as varsity sports. Varsity video game teams would offer many benefits outside of physical activity. Teamwork, time management, social relationships, and a successful mindset are just a few of these. Robert Morris University, a not-for-profit in Chicago, recently became the first university to recognize video games as a varsity sport. Members of this team will be playing League of Legends against teams at Ivy League schools These schools have video game teams but are not recognized as varsity sports. One of the greatest benefits of recognizing video games as varsity sports is the scholarships. This university is offering scholarships to its varsity League of Legends players that are paying up to half of their tuition. The benefits I've mentioned range from early education all the way to collegiate gaming. But some of these benefits are a clear indication that society should be putting more emphasis on video games and that the stigma surrounding video games should change from lazy to productive.